the U.S. economy, economy rather, is creating more jobs, but the mentally ill are largely left out from this increase in job growth. A new study reveals that 80 percent of the mentally ill are unemployed, but 60 percent of them want to work, and at least two-thirds can successfully keep a job if given proper support. However, supported employment programs are rare, and that's partly due to lack of funding, and I would imagine lack of understanding. Joel Corcoran is the executive director of Clubhouse International. The organization helps to develop community-based centers which give people with mental illness hope and opportunity to reach their full potential. And Stephen Manning has bipolar disorder. He found a full-time job through an employment program offered by the Carriage House in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Carriage House is part of Clubhouse Interna International. Welcome both of you gentlemen thank to you, Arise thank America. You, okay. Thank you so much for coming in. So just paint the picture. Let me start with you, Joel, just okay. to get my arms around this issue. What do you think is the underlying problem with the difficulty of those with mental illness in becoming uh, appropriately and gainfully employed? That's a great question. You know, I think there's, there's multiple factors. One, of course, is the stigma about mental illness. People don't talk about mental illness. They're afraid of it. And it, there's a lot of fear associated with mental illness. So when people learn that someone has a mental illness, they're less likely to consider them for a job. But also, people living with mental illness, particularly in this country, are often living below the poverty line. Because of their illness, they've had a long gap in their employment history, or maybe they haven't been able to finish school. And so oftentimes, they're just not given a chance. And I know that, uh, Stephen, with your, you've had a journey, you were diagnosed with, with bipolar dis yes. disorder, is that correct? But correct. you were able to find a job through one of the programs with uh, uh, Clubhouse International. Can you sort of tell me what stigmas that you experienced uh, personally as you looked for a job, tried to get into the workforce? Well, actually, you know, I was struck with uh, bipolar disorder back in 2002, and one of the stigmas... Uh, actually was uh, um, people really didn't know how to treat me. They didn't know how to handle me. So uh, my friends and family members kind of distanced themselves from me because they really didn't know, you know, if, if I was dangerous or uh, just how to relate to me. So there was a separation. Uh, there was a time period when I was homeless uh, and living in a city where I had been a professional for years uh, was... Uh, very, very different, and a life was different uh, for me mm -hmm. until I got involved with the clubhouse movement. Let me swing back over to you, Joel. Sure. And there's a powerful statement in the research information we just gave it in this introduction that two thirds of the people with mental illness, illness can successfully hold a job if given the proper support. So my question to you is, what is that proper support? Well, that's a great question, and it's true. People, if they're given the opportunity and the support, they have a very good chance of being successful. At the clubhouse, oftentimes what we're doing to help people find jobs and keep them is one, finding out what they want to do, working with the local employers, and then going that extra step once someone has a job. We have a program called Transitional Employment where the clubhouse staff person is very involved with the employer and with the member of the clubhouse who's going to work, so much so that if the member can't go in for some reason, the staff person will go in and fill in for them. So over the top support, believing in people's potential and doing whatever it takes to help them get through first day, second day, first week, second week, and if things go bad, to try again with unending opportunities to be successful in employment. Never giving up is really one of the biggest things, and believing in people. Mm -hmm. Stephen, can you tell me briefly why employment is important for you? How does it change your life? Well, it's changed my life because, you know, when, after I was struck with bipolar disorder and had to leave my job, I wanted to work. I wanted to work very badly. I wanted to get back into the workforce. Um, a great thing about what's happened to me is uh, I was involved with a transitional employment uh, position at a law firm. That led me to um, work permanently part-time in radio, and now I own my own business, a video production business, working 70 hours a week. Mm. So initially when um, I was struck with my illness, I wanted so bad to work and get back in the workforce. And I believe it's the same way with uh, dozens of other people with mental illness. We just need a chance. Yeah, in, indeed, and to feel useful to have that yes. purpose. Well, unfortunately, we've got to end the discussion right there with Stephen Manning, Joel Corker, and thank you both, gentlemen. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you.